see how many books I can pick up in a sitting. One, two, six. Oh dear. Okay. All right. Oh, and they're falling on me. You know, thumbnail thumbnails have got to be like the hardest portion of this. Okay. All right. We're gonna just keep. We're just gonna keep going. How many more can I hold? How many more can I hold before I drop them or they hit me in the face? Okay. All right. This is all. This is this is most of them, but not all. all right. We're good. I'm satisfied. I think. Oh man. Good enough. Uh, all right. Now you need to get up and turn off the camera. Oh shit. Oh god. was another big book month for me simply because it was my birth month and that and like there was some sales like that I kind of ran into and you know sales and me and sales and books and me and sales and books well you get the picture so I'm just gonna go ahead and get on into what books I ended up getting for the month of September I know that this book haul is coming pretty late but uh, better late than never, right? First of all, like right in the middle, like right at the beginning of the month of September, I went to Barnes and Noble and I like to raid their discount area sometimes, like where I can get books between seven to six dollars, depending. That didn't make any sense. Six to seven dollars. I'm fired, by the way. Um, so I got a couple books and I ended up getting, um, this ended up being like about seven dollars or so, and it was Joe Hill Strange Weather. I believe that this is a collection of four short stories within this book. Joe Hill is actually short for Joe Hill and Botham King. He is actually Stephen King's son and he's done very well for himself considering the fact that he decided not to take his father's name. I'm very anxious to get on to reading his other book called Nosferatu as well because that has been made into a TV movie with Jeffrey Quinto who I absolutely adore. Um, I'm not really too sure what this is about. I know I've been obsessing like over the cover. This was definitely a cover by. I don't usually do that, but I love green and this cover is just really pretty. It very much stands out. Looks like somebody's falling, but they're also kind of composed of like smoke and trees and birds and skulls. But I, I'm just, I've just been very obsessed with this cover ever since I saw it. So I ended up getting this. Knowing Joe Hill and Botham King, it's probably going to be kind of like thrillery, horror-ish, you know, like that kind of thing. So the next book that I ended up getting is Lincoln in the Bardo. Once again, this wasn't a book that I exactly knew a ton about. I, I know that I've seen it around a ton. And so I decided to go ahead and pick it up because everybody that I've heard talk about this book raves about it. I don't need to know what it's about. I just need to know like that a lot of people love it. And that's good enough for me because I've gotten to a point like where there's really not much that I won't read. I like reading a lot of different things. I like, it just really depends on my mood. Sometimes I'm really in the mood for something mushy and, you know, sentimental and sometimes in the mood to just to like watch people rip each other's faces off. It just really depends. So another thing that happened over the course of September, I went on Target.com's website again and I was looking around and they had this deal for buy two books, get one for free. On top of that, these books were pretty much similar to Amazon prices, which was pretty freaking impressive considering that I ended up getting like maybe three books for like about, like about 28 bucks, which is amazing, which is really, really, really good. So I kind of splurged a little bit on books that I found on there because that was a killer deal. And I knew that there was a bunch of books on there that I was kind of interested in. The, one of the books that I ended up getting is Kings, Queens, and Inbetweens. I've seen this book around a lot and I'm very excited about it. I know that there's drag queens in here and I don't feel like I've read enough books about drag queens and I think drag queens are just freaking amazing in so many levels. So I'm really, really interested to read this as well. So I ended up, the first time around with Target, I ended up getting a bad copy the entire spine was like protruding out because it was like they were trying to print the whole word like on one little area so i ended up having to take it back to them 
but they were really good about taking it back. They didn't like put up a fight or anything like that. But um, I know I'm very excited to read this one. I'm hoping that I'm going to be doing a month coming up, like where I might try. I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking going to start doing theme months, like where I try to get caught up on stuff that I really want to read and haven't had a chance to. And I kind of want to go through a month like where I kind of just binge contemporary. And this is probably going to be one of the ones that I pick up for that because I have so many contemporary books that I'm really behind on that I really want to read. So another book that I saw was Waste Tide by Chen Quefen, translated by Ken Liu. I met Tom from SFF, uh, SFF 118. And I'm gonna leave his channel up above. If you're looking for, for some really good science fiction recs, he does really amazing science fiction recs. And I actually met him when I went to BookNet Fest, and we got to talking about some of the science fiction books, and he actually recommended this one. So I went ahead and I saw it on there for the buy two get one free, and I picked it up because I knew that I was not gonna be able to find it any cheaper anywhere else. It's really not a big book, and it has gotten some mixed reviews online, but I'm really interested to see how I'm going to feel about this. Mimi is drowning in the world's trash. She is a waste worker on Silicone Isle where electronics from cell phones and laptops to bots and bionic limbs are sent to be recycled. They're a mass in towering heaps polluting every spare inch of land. On this island off the coast of China, the fruits of capitalism and consumer culture come to a toxic end. Mimi and thousands of migrant waste workers like her are lured to Silicone Isle with a promise of steady work and a better life. They're the lifeblood of the island's economy, but are at the mercy of those in power. A storm is brewing between ruthless local gang warring for control. Echo Terrace set on toppling the status quo. American investors hungry for profit and Chinese American interpreters searching for his roots. As these forces collide, a war erupts between the rich and the poor, between tradition and modern ambition, between humanity's past and its future. Mimi and the others like her must decide if they will remain pawns in the war or change the rules of the games altogether. So it sounds really interesting. The other book that I ended up getting, um, there was kind of, this is also from the Target sale, was also kind of like mixed reviews on that one, simply because, um, I don't know, some people really love it. I guess it's because it has a really open-ended ending, and that's Wild Girls, Wilder Girls by Rory Power. I have a feeling like that this is going to be very like subject to interpretation and you know opinion because it has gotten a lot of wide ratings on this book so we'll see how I enjoy it because as you can tell like, I tend to research this stuff a little bit before I purchase it just because I want to know if th what people object to in these books is something that I'm going to be objective to objecting to guys can like I talk already this being the fact that it has an open-ended ending is probably going to bother me like a little bit, but I'm still really curious to see like what I feel about it because I'm I don't want to base like 100% my opinions on what other people say. I kind of like to experience things for myself, so that's why I got this book because like I've been looking at it and I know it's been getting a lot of attention. Another book that I ended up getting is Frankly in Love by David Yoon. And we have these beautiful blue sprayed edges, which is pretty much the primarily the reason I got it. I just really wanted the sprayed edges. I mean, you guys know how I am with sprayed edges. And, um, I forgot to mention, like when I went to Barnes and Noble, I also picked up the Loki Where, Mis Where Mischief Flies by uh, Mackenzie Lee. I happen to be a huge Loki fan, and I love Tom Hiddleston because he is just very good looking, and he's also very sophisticated. And from what I can tell, he's probably a nice gentleman as well. I mean. He just has like that smile, you know, like you just kind of know, but I'm very excited for the Disney show where he's going to be on there. And I just really like wanted to read something. And I know I'm probably uh, the entire time I'm reading this, I'm probably going to be picturing Tom Hiddleston in my brain. And I feel like it's going to make me feel closer to that character. So I, that's why I got this because I love reading that these things where I can feel closer to these characters that I love for just a little bit longer. The next book that I got, I actually got in a book box and it is there will come a darkness. I got this in the Shelf Love Crate October, no, shelf, uh, the uh, September box, but I got it at the beginning of October. I've seen this around a lot too. I'll tell you guys what it's about. 
For generations, the seven prophets used their visions of the future to end wars and unite nations until the day, 100 years ago, when they disappeared. All they left behind was one final secret prophecy foretelling an age of darkness and the birth of a new prophet who could be the world's salvation or the cause of its destruction. With chaos on the horizon, five lives are set on a collision course. A prince exiled from his kingdom. A ruthless killer known as the Pale Hand. A once faithful leader torn between his duty and his heart. And a reckless gambler with a power to find anything or anyone. And a dying girl on the verge of giving up. One of them or all of them could break the world. Will they be savior or destroyer? Sounds really amazing. And we have this beautiful map going on on the inside as well. So we kind of have a really good, there's really like nothing special about the dust jacket or anything, but I do love some end papers. I love some beautiful end papers. So I kind of want to get back. I, I, I haven't read too much Star Wars literature and I kind of want to get back into it. And I feel like Star Wars Darth Plagueis is going to be a really great place to start. I don't know if you remember episode one where Senator Palpatine was trying to corrupt Anakin. And so Anakin was really afraid something was going to happen to Padme. And so he was very insecure. And Senator Palpatine was trying to lure Anakin over to the dark side by telling him that there, that there was a famous Sith who had actually learned how to prevent death. His name was Darth Plagueis. This is about Darth Plagueis, and this is about how Darth Plagueis, as a Sith Lord, figured out how to keep himself and others from dying. Everything that I've read about this, a lot of hardcore Star Wars fans feel that this is a canon book, and so I was really kind of like, I really just felt like I had to have this, and I kind of just want to do like where like I binge these kind of books. Jess nevertheless actually kind of reignited my interest in this because she actually bought a few books like on her last book haul on her channel and she kind of reignited my interest in getting back into Star Wars along with the Thrawn trilogy which I have on audiobook that I have yet to get to and I'm hoping that maybe very very soon in the future I'll be able to dive into that because I've been kind of itching also to do a science fiction month because I think science fiction is just awesome and I don't really read enough of it so I kind of just want to jump back into that too. The next book that I got is Cryer's War by Nina Varela. I've seen this around a lot. This has a beautiful, absolutely stunning cover. Not the only reason I bought it, but definitely a bonus. And then we have the spine, which is also gorgeous. And then this part here. So the tagline for this is one mortal, one made, one loved, one betrayed. And I know you guys have seen like this around, so I'm just going to go ahead and read the inside to you. Impossible love between two girls, one human, one maid, a love that could birth a revolution. After the War of Kinds ravaged the kingdom of Rabu, the Otome, designed to be playthings for royals, took over the estates of their owners and bent the human race to their will. Now Ayla, a human servant raised in the ranks of, at the house of the Sovereign, dreams of avenging the death of her family by killing the Sovereign's daughter, Lady Cryer, Cryer, who was made to be beautiful, to be flawless, and to take over the work of her father, Cryer had been preparing to do just that, to inherit her father's rule over the land, but that was before she was betrothed to Skyrie, Kinnock, who seemed to have a thousand secrets. That was before she discovered her father isn't as benevolent as she thought. That was before she met Ayla. Set in richly imagined fantasy world, Nina Varela's debut novel, a sweepingly romantic tale of love, loss, and revenge that grapples with what it really means to be human. And so this is a female-female romance, and I just thought it sounded spectacular, and I had to get it. That was from my Amazon, by the way. So for somebody that hasn't read Fangirl or anything, I kind of got a little bit excessive because I got kind of stirred up in the hype with this because I just saw so many beautiful covers. And so I ended up getting this which is wayward sun and the main reason I got like this is because I am a sucker for sprayed edges so that's actually so this was a not a cover by this was a sprayed edges by because look at these beautiful flowers I just I absolutely love this this isn't this isn't even one of the signed ones this is from Waterstones, and I just I thought this was such a beautiful beautiful book this actually matches his jacket here so it's just it's gorgeous and it's not like all the way around it's just right here and Let's just go ahead and also really quick just discuss these end papers too because it seems like every book that I got was just like a different end papers and they're just so so beautiful. I've gotten to a point like where I realized like that for me collecting books is like collecting art 
because I believe like that these books like are just made so artistically and not just the words the words can be artistically driven as well but just the whole atmosphere of the book itself which books create atmosphere physical books have atmosphere and that's one of the reasons why I love them so much so I am definitely a book collector and the more I collect books, the more I realize just how much I appreciate the beauty that they put, the beauty and the time that these publishers put in to making these books so damn beautiful. So I ended up getting two others. So this is the Target one, and this is the Barnes & Noble one. And what I really find very interesting in this is that these books are complete and utter opposites, in spite of the fact that they're the same book. So underneath this book, we have Clouds have more clouds. When I say like these books are as different as night and day, it's because they are. We have the cloud for, for day and we have the moon for night. And of course the end paper are also very different in these as well. But this is the one like that is just a standard one. It's just, it's the one that you would find anywhere but after I got these like I really really appreciated just how different and opposite they were. We have some of the end papers here for this book but like these ugh, I just I absolutely love this and I'm really really anxious to read about Simon and Bass so I really have to get on this train. So this is a Barnes & Noble one the, the dark edition which has the night clouds on it and the beautiful end papers and then we have just a standard wayward sun and yes I know I have not read started on the series yet but you know what these books are beautiful and honestly like I just had to have them when I saw them because sometimes beauty is fleeting and those Barnes & Noble books are not going to stick around forever. This is another series that I ended up kind of obsessing over because I've been wanting to read it since I know they're making a series out of it. It's uh, Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials series and uh, these are these are beautiful books so I'm just gonna go ahead and take them out of here. But we have the Golden Compass, the Suitable Knife, and then the biggest one, the Amber Spyglass. And I've been really like wanting to read these for a very long time and now that they're coming out with an actual series for this I'm really excited. I did watch the original movie with Nicole Kidman and I was really really fascinated by it. I really enjoyed it but I also heard that it was kind of a huge difference between that movie and the books themselves. So I kind of just want to go into it and read these before I get to the series because I just think it's going to be phenomenal and I'm really excited about it. So another book that I have been like looking at a bit because I ended up getting it second hand on Amazon and so I'm just very excited about it. Very excited because I also heard that they're going to be making a possible, I don't know if it's a series or a movie out of this as well. And that's Kashiel's Dart, a novel of passion, magic, and betrayal. And apparently this is like one of those cult classics or classics, you know, like maybe like not Mod maybe a modern classic for this kind of thing, but I'll go ahead and read you guys the inside. Born with a scarlet moat on her left eye, Philanery Del Luni is sold into indenture servitude as a child. When her bond is purchased by an enigmatic nobleman, she is trained in history, theology, politics, foreign language, the arts of pleasure, and above all, the ability to observe, remember, and analyze. Exquisite courtesan, talented spy, and unlikely heroine, but when Fandry stumbles upon a plot that threatens her homeland, Tierra de Angie, she has no choice. Betrayed into captivity in the barbarous Northland of Scaldia, and accompanied only by a disdainful young warrior priest, Fandry makes a harrowing escape and an even more harrowing journey to return to her people and deliver a warning of the impending invasion. And that proves only the first step in a quest that will take her to the edge of despair and beyond. Fandry no Delaney is the woman who holds the keys to her realm's deadly secrets and whose courage will decide the very future of her world. Not since Dune has there been an epic on the scale of Kashiel's Dart, a massive tale about the violent death of an old age and the birth of a new. It is a novel of grandeur, luxuriance, sacrifice, betrayal, and deeply laid conspiracies, a world of cunning poets, deadly courtiers, disposed rulers and besieged queen, a warrior priest and prince of the travelers, barbarian warlords, horror traitors, and truly Machiavellian villainous, all seen through the unflinching eyes of the unforgiving heroine. This is actually a series, this is the first one, but this was just too good. Like it just sounded amazing and I found it for like I think eight bucks on Amazon secondhand so I was very excited. This was another book I went to Target to pick up. Um, Shadows of the Dark Crystal, this is the first one. 
I love the movie. I have not I have yet to get to the TV series, but I've heard really good things about this book. This is actually one of three. This is the first in the one of three, and I'm very excited for this as well. This actually digs more into the Dark Crystal world, and I really love that world, and I think Jim Henson did a very good job on it. I'm very curious to see what the series is, but I'm even more curious about the books. So, I've seen this around a lot. I ended up getting the collector's edition of Fruit Baskets, the manga, and this is kind of a bigger manga than like what I thought it was going to be, but I've heard so many amazing things about this, and uh, for you guys that want to know what it is, after a family tragedy turns her life upside down, plucky high schooler Taru Honda takes matters into her own hands and moves out into a tent. Unfortunately for her, she pinches her new home on private land belonging to the mysterious Soham clan, and it isn't long before the owners discover her secret. But as Taru quickly finds out when the f family offers to take her in, the Somas have a secret of their own. When embraced by the opposite sex, they turn into the animals of the Chinese zodiac, a perennial favorite of fans, librarians alike. Natsuki Tosuke, beloved best-selling fruit baskets, series returns to print in deluxe and nimbus editions with beautiful full color illustrations and are not to be missed. So that's kind of an interesting little twist on a kind of a romantic manga and I'm really curious about this. Um, 12 Months of April really loves this and so does Shay Geeks Out. They both really really love this series so I'm really curious about it. The next book that I got I ended up also picking up a Target. I didn't do this on the online like though I actually ended up picking it up in store because I really wanted it because I love the cover. This is Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi and I know Book of the Month why I had this as well but look at that underneath. It is just stunning and brilliant and I had to have it because you know once again the whole artwork thing, me looking at books like artwork, this is another example of that and I'm obsessed. This is a contemporary um, book made created by the same person who made Emergency Contact, which is still another book that I have yet to read, which is why I want to do a month-long contemporary readathon for myself. And if you guys want to join me, let me know. But I would really like want to get into a month-long contemporary spree because contemporaries don't usually take me very, a very long time to get through. Usually fantasies take me a lot longer to get through but I'm just, I'm so excited for these. So the next two books I ended up getting from the Owl Crate um, October box, which was kind of more of a spooky box. They had two different books in it. They had The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. And I am obsessed with this cover. I think this cover is just absolutely perfect. I love like the little eye coming through the really creepy house. It's paperback, but it's just, it's so gorgeous and it's very creepy and I love it. Halloween is by far and above my favorite holiday, and I love all the creepiness all month long. And then the other book that I got is The Bone Houses by Emily Lord Jones. I was not a huge fan of her other book, The Hearts We Stole. I, I ended up giving, I think, like that book about 3.5 stars, which it was, it was good in theory, but like I didn't like how it played out. But I heard the premise of this one, which I believe is like about somebody like necromancer graves or something like that it's a lot darker and I really just kind of want to give her another shot and this is a book that I've been like looking at for a while so I'm hoping I end up loving this so I also oh dear I just had a bunch of books land on me because that's what I get for putting them next to me so I ended up getting a few copies of Dark Dawn in September as well because I ended up going ahead and buying it so like that I could go ahead and start reading it which I just actually recently finished this All I can say is I was very happy with everything. That's all I'm going to tell you because it's the third in the series and I don't want to tell you more because I don't want to ruin it. And if you want to watch, if you want to end up reading it, I want you to read this. So you need to read this. Like it was amazing. I also ended up getting Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco. This is actually the pr cover that you got when you pre-ordered the book and oh, I love it so much. It's so beautiful. And I had to figure out how to put these book covers on these books because like they come flat rolled in like little tubes so I had to go through and like spend a about a week flattening them out just to put them on there but it's totally worth it I'm so excited this is the fourth book in the stocking Jack the Ripper series and for you guys who know me know I love the series I really want to get to this book soon I'm hoping I get to this in the month of November 
but I'm so sad because this is the last adventure I'm going to have with these characters. I love Audrey Rose and Thomas Crestwell just so, so much, and I'm just so sad to see that it's going to be over with. But this was such a wonderful ride and I loved it so much. This is such a great book in the fact like that you get to experience um, kind of like classic serial killers but with a kind of a YA twist to it and you get to go along with Thomas Cresswell and Otto Rose kind of trying to solve the mystery of who done it and I really love that and, there, and those were so good at being historically accurate without actually like being 100% historically accurate and they really kind of did a really good job of just making sure like that they were very much flowed together and that they did the serial killers justice that you know were the actual historical serial killers so these are phenomenal I do highly recommend this series. The next book I got I got from my um, other book box Illumicrate I did an unboxing for it, which I will leave up there, and I really, really loved it. It was just amazing. And this is the UK cover of Kingdom and Souls. And can we just say, like, that it has a snake spray painted into it, and it's just oh, so, so beautiful. And I am a sucker for gorgeous art. Oh, it's so beautiful. This is about a witch doctor, and she's having to sell parts of herself to become more powerful, but she only has so many parts that she can bargain with. I'm so excited. So another book I actually got for my birthday from a friend of mine, Daniel, and um, it's by Evan Winters, The Rage of Dragons, and I've seen this around a lot. Daniel Green actually raved about this book as well, and so I was really kind of interested in it because, you know, he's very touchy about like what he actually raves about, so I was very curious about this, and it's just, it looks so amazing. So it says, the Omni people have been fighting an unwinnable fight for a hundred thousand years. Their society has been built around the war and only war. The lucky ones are born gifted. One in every 2,000 women has the power to call down dragons. One in every hundred men is able to magically transform himself into a bigger, stronger, faster killing machine. Everyone else is fodder, destined to fight and die in the endless war. Young and giftless Tao knows all of this, but he has a plan of escape. He's going to get himself injured get out early and settle down to the simple life, marriage, children, land, until those closest to him are brutally murdered and his grief swiftly turns to anger fueled by thoughts of revenge. Tao dedicates himself to an unthinkable path. He'll become the greatest swordsman to ever live, a man willing to die a hundred thousand times for the chance to kill the three who betrayed him. And this is the first in a series, so there will be more. And I hope that's a promise, not a threat, because I like promises. So the last few books that I have are from Book of the Month, and this is Bringing Down the Duke by Eve Dunmore, and it just sounds so phenomenal. This is kind of an angsty romance, um, kind of a historical angsty romance, and she's and the girl in this is actually kind of trying to fight for women's rights, so it's kind of got a twist. It's not just a flighty romance or anything else like that. It's actually got a very outspoken woman in this, which I am very excited to see with that. Another book that I also ended up getting is The 10,000 Doors of January, which I actually finished. It's This is just the dust jacket. Um, I did do, I spray painted the edges, which if you guys are interested, I'll leave that video linked above for you as well. Um, but I actually did spray painting the edges for this and it came out beautiful and I actually just recently finished this as well. This is about January who, um, this is kind of a portal fantasy for why, for geared towards young adults. And it was really kind of amazing because it was a story within a story and I really loved how everything kind of like was just fastened in together like it kind of just you know like kind of all came together and it was just a really beautiful story and I'm gonna go more into detail when I do my wrap-up but this is one of the books I also got during the month of September the last book that I got for the month of September is a chestnut man and this is actually about a serial killer in Copenhagen it sounds so phenomenal. I, like I said before, like I really love serial killers. I think they're very fascinating. Um, not for the fact like that I agree with what they're doing, because I don't. I mean, they're pretty crazy. But I really like the suspense and I like the psychology behind it. So I thought this was going to be just amazing. This is another like one that I kind of spray painted. It was supposed to be silver, but it ended up gray, which perfectly fine. It still goes with the book. We're good here. And then this was another book also like that I ended up getting um, Ruth Ware the turn of the key and I ended up getting like this from the Target sale as well it was the buy two get one free sale 
I have books all over my room like right now so I'm just kind of like looking to see like what else but I, this is the last book that I have to haul and this is a suspense thriller and I haven't read anything at all by Ru Ruth Ware before but I am so excited to be jumping into this because I think it's just gonna be grand and I can't wait well guys I hope you guys enjoyed this haul um, I kind of went crazy this month because it was my birthday and you know what it's my birthday so I'm gonna go ahead and get the books that I want because it's my birthday and it was fun so thank you guys so so much for joining me I hope you guys like this video if you guys like this video hit the little like hit subscribe hit the little bell icon if you guys want to receive emails every time I post and I will I post as often as I possibly can and I'll see you guys again very soon